Okay, hey class. Uh, well, it's November 1st today, and in the earlier video I showed you uh, in Cottonwood, Arizona, I showed you some vines close to the river, how the cold air settles. Well, uh, Arizona's pretty diverse. Here we're looking at some vines. This is uh, Vidal Blanc, which is a pretty hardy vine. But uh, again, November 1st, we're in Chino Valley, Arizona. And so elevation here is about 4,500 feet. And this vine has frozen uh, pretty good. This vine is done for the year. Uh, these have already lost all of their foliage. Uh, temperature, we have a, uh, a sensing gauge here on the greenhouse in Chino Valley. Temperatures here were down to 25 degrees. And so that, again, that was in that same time frame about a week and a half ago. So uh, mid to late October, hard freeze, vines are done. I showed you in that earlier video, those vines were just frosted a bit. Um, these vines are, these are shut down, these are done. And we'll have on these tip die back quite a ways. Now again, these are young vines. These are only in their second leaf. Um, these vines were actually propagated by the uh, viticulture class the last time when I taught it in, in person. And so these are kind of in an experimental row. There's only about 20 vines or so here, different varieties, and we're attempting to determine which ones are best suited to the cold um, temperatures that Chino Valley can experience. And so I wanted to tell you about, uh, as far as cold goes, the temperatures that, um, the minimum temperatures, as far as vine tolerance to those minimum temperatures, uh, a vine like this, negative five degrees, and uh, it's starting to then see some, some damage. Uh, most of your Vitus vinifera vines, you start approaching zero, you start having some damage. There's some varieties, I think Merlot is one, that doesn't like it much lower than 15 degrees or so. So depending on the region you're in, it determines, and you guys are thinking about this as far as your uh, vine selection goes uh, for your presentation, matching the variety to the region, the temperatures of that region. And so um, you would, if you're growing in the Chino Valley area, one of your issues is not so much the cold temperatures. Um, again, I said it could get down to minus five. There's hybrid vines, there's uh, American varieties that will do well here. A um, lot, lot of uh, hybrid varieties would do well. But it's the wind, you notice this is just a normal day in Chino leaves are blowing around. Uh, this, these open plains, 40, 50 mile per hour winds aren't uncommon. And I was checking, like I said, temperatures. We, it also has these extreme spring and um, fall temperatures where it's approaching 85, 90 degrees in, day, in the daytime and still touching down close to freezing at night. That's just, uh, it's pretty wacky. And so Arizona has quite a bit of diversity as far as temperatures go. You know, up around the Flagstaff area, uh, moving west from Flagstaff through Belmont, Williams, all that high ground uh, north of the Mogollon Rim there is 7,000 feet elevation or higher. Um, San Francisco peaks up to 12,000, I think 12,600 feet is a high spot in Arizona. But um, everywhere south of the Mogollon Rim, you start to drop off. I mentioned in the other video, get these mid-elevation ranges. This would be considered one of those four-season type climates. Uh, max high temperatures in the summer, typically in the low 100s, um, but many stretches of time where it's in the 80s and 90 degrees in the summertime for high temperatures and cooling off quickly at night into the 60s or so, even in the summertime. And again, winter temperatures from here over into the Prescott area, we're touching zero most winters. Uh, extremely cold winters might go down negative five or so. But as you move um, south from here, uh, you start to move down into the valleys, the lower elevations of Yavapai County, down into Phoenix, you really start bumping up the temperatures. Uh, you start moving into the lower Sonoran Desert area where typical summer temperatures, 115 for maximum highs, uh, maybe not even dipping below 90 degrees in some of the warmer nights. And now winters in Phoenix are typically not going much below freezing. So if you had some vines growing in Phoenix, your issue there is them not even going dormant uh, not even reaching dormancy when there's not a frost, there's not that cooling period of time. It's still 90 degrees in Phoenix and it's uh, November 1st. So uh, vines there, they're kind of, you have to have sp specific varieties that will do well in the really, really hot temperatures, but also in the um, 
the warm winters. There's not a big um, cool spell there. As you start to move, I mean, it only gets worse as you move over towards the Colorado River Valley. Highs 118, 119 are common. Uh, lows down near 90 degrees as summertime temperatures and winter temperatures typically in the 60s or 70s with lows typically staying above freezing. Um, some of them will get touched by a bit of frost, but not much. In downtown Phoenix, you're not going to see freeze very frequently. Um, but as you start to move towards the southeast, you, you run into Tucson. The climate starts to get moister. Uh, you start to experience more summer rainfall patterns. Uh, the, the cold fronts in the wintertime kind of sweep in from the, the west, and uh, we get a, a gentler rains, but it doesn't matter. The vines are dormant. Um, and not a lot of moisture accumulates in the root zone. And so typically what we're dealing with is summer rainfall. And as you start to move from the rim and south, you get quite a bit of rainfall uh, in those areas. The lower deserts, it's very sporadic and you really shouldn't count on it. You need to have your irrigation in place um, and make, making sure you're probably watering on a, on a strict schedule. And then as you move into southeastern Arizona, the months of July, August, and a lot of times September is typical of monsoon season. And uh, those areas southeast of Tucson, down towards Wilcox, Sonoida, the Dragoon Mountains, uh, areas there can receive during the three month, uh, they could receive up to 12 inches of rain or more depending on elevation and how wet the season is. And, uh, the, a lot of that moisture comes from the south and it's spurred on by um, high pressure systems setting up in just the right area, a thermal low set up near the uh, Yuma area. Those work together, pulling moisture down from the, the south and it just filters into those areas. So they get quite a bit of rainfall. And as you start to move up in elevation, you start to experience those four season climates again. And so Wilcox, for instance, has very similar climate to, let's say, the Verde Valley, areas of the Verde Valley. Extreme warmth in the summertime, uh, cold winter uh, night temperatures, and so quite, quite diversity there. But uh, grapes do really well in that climate, in that elevation, and that 5,000 foot elevation down in the southeast is some of the highest elevation growing grapes uh, in the world. And so that's just a little bit of the roller coaster of diversity of uh, weather in Arizona and uh, as you kind of experience the climate. And again, grapes can grow. There's a lot of different varieties. Grapes can find a niche in all those climates from Flagstaff down to, to Yuma. You kind of cross the gamut of the whole state as far as climate goes.